The final item of business today is the members' business debate on motion number 15202 in the name of Alec Rowley on RMT strike over Caledonian sleeper concerns. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could press the request to speak buttons now, please. I call on Alec Rowley to open the debate. Seven minutes, please, Mr Rowley. Thank you, President Officer. Um, when I read that the RMT members working on the Caledonian Sleeper were going to go on strike, I was interested to see what the problem was. Uh, someone who worked and lived in London and used the, the Sleeper um, fairly regularly, I'm um, very aware of the importance of the Sleeper service for Scotland, for people in Scotland accessing to and fro London and indeed for the Scottish economy. Um, so, so it was with interest that I wanted to find out what exactly was going on. Um, and to the credit of the workers on the, the sleeper, they clearly were raising issues that I have to say I was quite astonished by. I was astounded. This major means of transport and vital artery of Scottish infrastructure had been left to operate with numerous defects which have failed to be addressed by the new operator, CERCO. Looking into this further, I found that working conditions for RMT workers, for the workers on the Caledonian sleeper, they were of serious concern. The health and welfare uh, of workers should be the utmost priority of every employer and there is never a justifiable excuse for letting these concerns take a back seat. RMT have identified more than 200 faults with the rolling stock operated by CERCO. This includes smoke detectors being disconnected, toilets being inoperable, lighting and heating systems not working, lack of hot water in some coaches, air conditioning problems throughout the summer, and a multitude of other serious uh, defects in these carriages. The result of this is difficult working conditions and a failure to provide acceptable levels of public services for passengers from the rail operator. The total Scottish Government expenditure on tendering the sleeper and ScotRail contracts was over £13.5 million money that could have been reinvested into passenger fares and services. I echo the sentiments of the RMT General Secretary, Mick Cash, when he says, and I quote, this is yet another example of CERCO winning public service contracts and failing to deliver for the taxpayer, passengers and staff. If the Scottish Government is committed to this process, then serious consideration must be given to address the issues that are arising from it. It would be extremely useful for the Scottish Government to commit to raising with the RMT's safety concerns at its next franchise performance meeting with CERCO Caledonian Sleeper later this month. Yeah. Minister. In the spirit of being helpful, is Mr Rowley aware that through ACAS there has been quite constructive talks, I think, um, just yesterday? between RMT and CERCO that I think have progressed a number of matters that I'm sure will feature in Mr Rowley's contribution. Alec Crowley. I'm certainly aware that discussions were due to take place again yesterday with ACAST. I certainly hope that we can reach a point where a further um, strike would be avoided um, because all credit, as I said at the start, to the workers on these services, they are losing money by taking strike action in order to highlight what should be a concern for the public right across Scotland and certainly should be a major concern for the, the government. So I think it's important, yes, that these talks continue. I welcome, and I have not been made aware of the, the outcome of the latest talks, but I welcome if those talks are making progress. And that's why I think it's actually important to have this discussion and this debate so the company know that this parliament is concerned about these, um, these problems that are, being ar 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 arising. It is important uh, to also raise the concerns that RMT have repeatedly expressed over the inclusion of an indemnity clause in real franchising agreements, claiming that they merely serve to undermine industrial relations. The Scottish Government should be committed to addressing the concerns of a recognised trade union and the negative impacts that the terms of a public franchise agreement are having on its members. 
This means this means by the means by which the franchise agreement currently operates does not incite meaningful negotiations when matters of dispute arise. If the Scottish Government insists on awarding public contracts to private train operating companies, then more must be done to alleviate the tensions that are being caused through poor terms and conditions that allow operators to benefit through not engaging fully in the industrial relations process. At this stage, I feel it is absolutely necessary for the Scottish Government to meet with RMT officials in order to fully examine the serious concerns that, have and also that they have and also to work together to find a way forward. Even with the progress that has been made, I do think that that meeting with RMT representatives of the workers on the, the, the Caledonia Sleeper would be important. A crucial public service in the form of the Caledonian Sleeper is suffering through poor operation. The Scottish Government should feel obliged to do all that it can to find resolution to these issues and work with the RMT and CERCO in order to alleviate industrial relations problems. The Sleeper is a historic asset to the UK, operating since the 1870s to connect London and Scotland. It is shameful to read the faults and the insufficiencies, the inefficiencies being experienced today in such a service. We should be proud of our history of rail invention and development. It is in the UK that the first ever railway journey took place. Our design and technological advancements was exported all over the world. The steam engine invented in Scotland. The steam, the steam locomotive invented in England. We have a shared history of globally recognised success in the field of rail transportation. The Caledonian Sleeper embodies that shared connection, a join in rail between London and Scotland. It is important, therefore, that we take seriously the concerns that have been raised. I think it is important that, as parliamentarians and in this parliament, we say that we want to see the very best service. I am aware that there is investment that is planned to take place over the next 18 months to two years. But what is absolutely clear is the current state in which these carriages are running is not acceptable, and we can't wait 18 months to two years, neither in terms of the condition of the workers or indeed the service that has been offered. So hopefully we will hear from the Minister today that he also takes these matters seriously and that we're going to actually get action to address them. Thank you. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of around four minutes or so. And I call on Chick Brodie to be followed by John Finney. Yeah, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, I welcome the debate uh, brought by Alec Rowley tonight. Uh, let me state up front, uh, Presiding Officer, by my overriding, overarching interest uh, is that of not just our customers, but of course the employees, the company, uh, and importantly, our reputation for national efficiency and service and transport. If you would indulge me, Presiding Officer, allow me to look at the history of where we've been, I think where we are, uh, and as importantly, the future of where we're going. Uh, there was no doubt, Presiding Officer, that the uh, sleeper service had to be upgraded. And the Cross-Party Infrastructure Committee, as far back as its sixth report in October 2012, uh, uh, emphasized the renewal of the passenger a uh, rail franchise uh, was uh, uh, essential. Uh, and the sleeper service, of course, was a part of that. And we welcome the committee, the commitment of both the UK and the Scottish governments to upgrade the sleeper service. In 2012, the Scottish government announced that this service would be franchised, as we know, to run uh, for 15 years from mid-2015. Importantly, it was stated that a total of £100 million pounds £100 million pounds would be invested in new and additional rolling stock. And part of the franchise was that the franchisee would commit to replacing the Mark II and Mark III rolling stock by 2018. That, of course, will, as we know, take time. But we cannot again say that it was absolutely right uh, of the uh, staff to highlight concerns of guests facing defects, whether there were 200 defects or 160 defects. But these two events that I've just mentioned, the replacement of the rolling stock and the current situation uh, coincide to suggest that there was a lack of investment, new capital investment, 
and regular maintenance uh, should have been a feature earlier on. And hence the need for an upgrade. Uh, and I believe that while these defects have been raised, that there was no infringement of health and safety rules. Of course, due diligence of the condition of the vehicles was required, and indeed improvement, a condition of the invitation to tender. That said, presiding officer, the question is, what was the response to the problems by the company? In my many years of management, I had always tried to be respons responsive to employee issues favorably raised, rather than endure, endure action that ultimately affects and affected the employees, the company and its customers. So rather that the, both the employee representatives and the company sit down uh, or sat down either separately or at the, as we heard, sat down with, with ACAS uh, yesterday, which I believe, I hope, it has achieved an amicable a solution or at least a process of going forward. Not just to itemise the issues, but to agree a programme of resolution. And my understanding is that this has happened or is happening and certainly will happen. I have no doubt due to employee involvement and I hope to management openness. The releasing of carriages for reliability improvement work, the additional 12 Aston, Alstom uh, employees and posts to support fleet maintenance, deployment of fitters to cover train departures uh, at key stations, additional focus on the Mark II lounge cars, the oldest vehicles indeed in the fleet. And I'm also advised that replacement higher-end vehicles for the Mark II lounge cars, the oldest vehicles in the fleet, has been covered to ensure resilience. Presiding officer, on that basis, I'm sure that until new vehicles are in place, and I wish, I'm sure we all wish that that could be tomorrow, by working the issues together, resolving them, focusing on addressing the issues such as air conditioning, fire alarms and so on, we can build on the PPM and right time marginal improved performance, because there has been an improvement in performance in period eight in 2015 on a year on year basis comparison. And we can induce greater sleeper performance in the interests of increased passenger traffic, as Alec Rowley indicated he wished to see happen also. Thank you. Thank you. And I call John Finney to be followed by Alec Johnston. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I firstly congratulate Alec Rowley on, on bringing this important motion here tonight? And can I make two declarations? Can I declare my membership of the RMT Parliamentary Group? I'm very privileged to be part of that. And can I declare that my office is based in the iconically named Highland Rail House and our immediate neighbours, Bar One, are the Caledonian Sleeper. Indeed, I, I uh, with relative frequency, meet Mr Peter Strachan, the Managing Director, and I'm very happy to go on the record as saying that he's a very uh, straight-talking and engaging guy who certainly resolved a couple of issues that I've taken to him. I know it was a conscious decision to base in the Highlands and absolutely commend their procurement policy. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, Peter tells me he's a railwoman, and that's through and through. He worked for formerly for British Rail. And I see on the internet he says that he's leading the circle team responsible for transforming the sleeper service into an outstanding hospitality service that is emblematic of the best of Scotland. Well, what the managing director knows is the tr transformation I want is for the entire rail ne network to be viewed as a public asset serving the public. And that, I understand that's what the majority of the public want too. We know that in relation to the East Coast service, for instance, which failed twice under private uh, franchise, it was a success when run by the state. Now, you and I might have seen that as a model to be rolled out across the various franchises. Of course, Mr Cameron saw that as an opportunity to make further profit for his friends. There are break clauses in all these contracts, and I hope at some point they're, they're utilised. In the meantime, I want this service to be a success. Now, like many, I have no regard for CERCO or their working practices. Um, um, I, but I certainly want this service to be a success. That's going to be a challenge because of the, the rolling stock. Um, but, uh, and I'm grateful for RMT, as I'm sure other members are, for the briefing. A briefing that highlights the extent of public money that is connected uh, with uh, private rail. Now, um, due to um, rail works that are taking place in my native Le Habar, the, for the, uh, in the very near future, the sleeper is going to be going to open. And that's not just an opportunity to um, provide a service to the West Highlands, an opportunity to perhaps have a different service apply. 
Great opportunity for Argyll and Niles. As many have said, it's an iconic journey. I'm trying to envisage this iconic journey, this um, emblematic of the best of Scotland. If, for instance, I can't go to the toilet, if the air quality is poor, and air quality is a very important issue, if there are staff going about carrying boiling water, and what assessment has been done of that, if there's a pungent smell from the toilets, the catalogue of uh, faults should be uh, um, something that is addressed with a matter of frequency, uh, a matter of urgency, and certainly, you know, CERCO to be engaged, uh, commended for engaging in talks some months ago. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and uh, it, it's, I'm, I'm delighted that ACAS are involved there. Um, these seem to be fundamental things. I wouldn't have thought there's a, 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 anyone would take issue with the resolution of these matters. These seem to be absolutely fundamental to any public service, let alone one we're, we're putting as em, 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 emblematic. Um, now, um, the issue of indemnity um, and the suggestion that this encourages the train operating companies not to engage meaningfully, I think there is, there is uh, some substance to that. Uh, and I, I, again, people may very be, well be concerned at the, 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 the role that that plays in industrial relations. What I want to do is commend the role of the RMT. I think health and safety, the safety of workers at the work, the safety of the public who are served is absolutely should be front and centre of everything we do. I hope that CERCO will take the opportunity to recognise the importance of health and safety in train operations. I hope they'll engage meaningfully in talks. I hope that the Scottish Government will play their part in that, because there, there is public money connected with this, and I'm sure the Minister wouldn't want that to not be properly dispersed. So um, I hope the, address, uh, the matters are fully uh, um, addressed. It's important to say that these concerns have been legitimately addressed, and they should, uh, raised, and they should be legitimately addressed. Thank you very much. Many thanks. I now call on Alec Johnston to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. May I begin by thanking Alex Rowley for bringing this matter before Parliament this evening. The Caledonian Sleeper Service is seen, perhaps by some who think they live in the jet age, as a relic of a bygone time. But the fact is that many people rely on it, especially in the north of Scotland, to give them a service that can take them to London overnight and bring them home in the same way. And for that reason, this service, regardless of how traditional it may be in its appearance, is vital in the periphery, peripheral areas of Scotland. It's important, therefore, that we recognise that this service must be preserved, and that should be one of our priorities. To this end, the UK government uh, preemptively offered £50 million for the refurbishment of the service with the condition that the Scottish Government would match that funding. As a result, there is £100 million waiting to be spent on the refurbishment of these trains and the replacement of some rolling stock. That is money that we need to get spent as quickly as possible and the schedule uh, does allow us to do that in reasonable time but it is important that the quality of the service is increased. That, the nature of the service is such that it is important to many, but the problems that have been outlined by Alec Rowley in his motion and during his speech this evening tell us that the service is not operating as it should. And for that reason, we should all be concerned. However, what does concern me is that this has resulted in industrial action because I believe that indicates somewhere in this process a failure of process. I believe that the franchise agreement puts it very squarely in the responsibility of the Scottish Government to ensure that enforcement is taking place and that the standards that were discussed when the franchise agreement was eventually agreed are held to. If these standards are not being maintained, then it is the Scottish Government's responsibility, in my view, to properly police that agreement. If we are at the stage where that has been exhausted, then industrial action can be understood, if perhaps not justified, from my standpoint. We have heard earlier in an intervention from the Minister that discussions have taken place and that some progress has already been made. I look forward, perhaps, in the Minister's closing speech to hearing more about that. But I still believe it is the Government's job 
not the trade union's job to ensure that enforcement takes place. The other thing that worries me about strike action is the effect it may have on the service. This service will always be marginal. That is why so much government support goes into ensuring that it continues. Over the years, quite often, rumours have circulated that the service will be terminated. And that has never happened because government understands the significance and importance of that service. The problems that we have heard about tonight will inevitably discourage passengers from using the service. But I would suggest that strike action, perhaps unnecessary strike action. Uh, yes, briefly. John Finney. I am grateful for the member mentioning the problems. Would the member agree that it is a failure to, to resolve these fundamental issues like toilets, not working, air conditioning, that will dissuade people, rather than discussion about the resolution of these problems? Alec Johnson. <laughs> Indeed, but I believe the government should have the whip hand in ensuring that that work is done and done quickly. Uh, surely it is within the, the terms of the franchise agreement, perhaps the minister will tell us, uh, that financial pen penalties can be imposed on the franchisee for failure to maintain these standards. To complete the remark I was uh, in the process of making when I took the intervention, I am concerned that given these problems and the effect this might have on the willingness of people to use the service, that strike action, delays or removal of services on certain days may simply have a, the sim a similar ongoing effect. I want this service to survive, I want it to be of high quality, and I do not want passengers to find themselves standing on the platform without a train for any reason. That is why I want this resolved, but I do not think strike action is the way ahead. Thank you. Malcolm Chisholm. I would like to congratulate Alec Zarelli for uh, introducing this debate, shining a spotlight uh, on the gross failures of CERCO and giving us an opportunity to express solidarity with the employees and indeed the travelling public, since some of the defects on board are potentially dangerous to them as well as to the staff. Now, as we've heard, the franchise was awarded in 2014 with a commitment to replace rolling stock by 2018. But with two years to go until this deadline is met, we have seen relations deteriorate and conditions for employees and indeed customers get worse. In response to media questioning on December 22nd, the day of the strike action, Peter Strachan, managing director of uh, Caledonian Sleeper, said, I quote, both Serco and more importantly over 1,000 of our paying passengers are being hugely inconvenienced by this wholly unnecessary action by the RMT in the run-up to Christmas. I would advance the suggestion that perhaps a greater inconvenience to the paying passenger would be to travel in below par accommodation where their safety is potentially put at risk and where the staff who serve them are intensely unhappy about the situation. RMT representatives expressed frustration at the apparent resistance to addressing the key issues highlighted in the motion, issues that are significant in terms of the long-term ability of CERCO to provide a value for money service. It is for this reason that the members backed industrial action by nine to one in the ballot. The decision made to award this contract to CERCO was clearly unfortunate when management this far has been so poor. As Mike Cash, the General Secretary of RMT, pointed out, and I quote again, our members have been unhappy with CERCO's management of the iconic service from Scotland to London since the very early days of them taking on this 15-year franchise. This is yet another example of CERCO winning public sector contracts and failing to deliver for the taxpayer, passengers and staff. I myself used to use this service, the London Edinburgh bit, when I was an MP, and perhaps the extended uh, route uh, into the Highlands is one of the most iconic uh, routes uh, that uh, exists uh, in the country. It's certainly a service that we can be proud of, and for it to be operated by a controversial outsourcing giant, and for the standards to have slipped so early in their tenure, is a very serious problem that speaks volumes. There are other issues apart from CERCO itself. For example, in April of last year, the General Secretary of the Transport Salaries Staff Association, Manuel Cortes, described the separate tender for ScotRail and the Caledonian Sleeper as, and I quote, market fundamentalism of 
the highest order. He stated that every knowledgeable commentator argues that the biggest problem facing our industry is fragmentation, and this is leading on to wider problems, obviously, about the railways, which I accept are more within the province of the UK government than the Scottish government. Christian Wilmer acknowledged as one of the UK's leading commentators on transport matters that, again quoting, fragmentation is the problem, not the solution. He stated then that the only one way back to a rational cheap railway is to bring all the disparate parts together under unified control. This cannot be done without reintegrating the track and the trains. End of quote. Fragmentation leads to inefficiency and ultimately higher costs for people and the kind of lower standards attested to by the RMT. As Action for Rail, the campaign to put people before profit on railways argues privatisation of railways has led to fragment, a fragmented and dysfunctional system. And I'm very glad that the Labour Party at UK level has policies to address that issue. In conclusion, I hope that in future, CERCO representatives will approach discussions with workers more constructively than they have in the past and with a mind to ensuring standards are restored and maintained. My second hope is that the lessons provided both here and in previous contracts will serve as cautionary tales for future procurement decisions. Having no choice should not be a viable reason for awarding a franchise. I hope in future the government will provide evidence that all alternatives have been fully and properly explored and that they will consider other factors above immediate costs. Let's learn the lessons for the future. But also, let's do everything we can to hasten resolution of the immediate problems. Many thanks. Can I now invite Derek Mackay to respond to the debate. Minister, seven minutes or so, please. OK, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I congratulate Alec Rowley in, in raising the debate, which has allowed some uh, discussion around very important and significant matters, which I think every member would be entitled to expect me to interrogate on hearing a number of the uh, points which I certainly have done. If I can reflect on the comments made um, on, on the concerns raised uh, by Alec Rowley, I think uh, I've had a close look at those that you've mentioned, uh, the members mentioned, uh, and others. And there's a degree of satisfaction in the reports that I've had back. And in that, for all members, I say that the discussions with ACAS between the RMT and CERCO has been reported to me as making progress in issues in dispute, and I think all members have, have welcomed on that. But it will be for the RMT and indeed CERCO to say what their perspectives are eh, on, on that progress. I think Chick Brody has very helpfully given us the, the nature of the, the franchise that the Scottish Government has concluded to show how that, that can progress some of the issues. Fundamentally, the, the new rolling stock will make such a difference to a number of these items if the concerns are to be taken at face value, eh, which, of course, eh, we do. And John Finney, I think, carried out a very careful balancing act that I watched him do there between a degree of respect for some of the management that you have close um, relations eh, with, if for no other reason, proximity to the head office, uh, and the RMT. I know your fundamental beliefs in terms of that socialist green utopia with publicly run transport services. That's not in the current um, remit of how we can award contracts. But, of course, there are changes to the, the, the legislation. Who would have thought those changes would be coming in in a time of a Conservative government in, in the UK? But there will be future options as to how rail franchises could be awarded if there is that legislative uh, change. In terms of the indemnity issues, uh, I should say, of course, there are conditions attached in the franchise agreement. It's not simply a question um, of um, uh, substitute cash. There, there, there's, there are conditions attached to that. And also, to cover Alec Johnson's point, there are conditions to performance as well. And where there are performance breaches, of course, there are penalties that are triggered. And much wider um, studies, uh, of course. John Finney. Much. I'm grateful for the Minister accepting intervention on in that point. The indemnity issue that I raised, of course, isn't one just unique to this occasion. That's a long-standing concern, an understandable concern that RMT have had that this has made train operating companies less inclined to engage. Minister? Well, let me make it perfectly clear. If there are any disputes, I expect operators to engage fully, comprehensively, to have proper dialogue and to arrive at a resolution. Ministers have to be convinced in terms of some of the conditions around franchisees' non-performance in terms of conditions been made, efforts been made uh, to try and resolve matters so that there is certainly much to this issue by way of, of uh, conditions that's not taken um, as read. Um, I've covered the issue of, of penalties. And to Malcolm Chisholm, I just want to say again that 
I think you should be very careful uh, on talking about issues of putting public safety at risk. If there were health and safety issues, the ORR would have something to say about it. Whilst recognising there are concerns and points that have been addressed, and I think there's a programme to, to address much of that, uh, we, shouldn't, uh, we should be very careful with the language that we're using in terms of Caledonian sleeper. I respect that there's been an impact uh, on the travelling public at a critical time over the, the winter period. I would want to cover some issues uh, of uh, performance and uh, improvement, because no one takes the issue um, lightly, and we certainly all want to avoid any future uh, strike uh, action. But the reality is that the, the vehicles that are being used are up to 40 years old. Some of these issues aren't new in terms of the faults and the ageing nature uh, of the, the rolling stock. And, of course, investment is long overdue, but by the way we've conducted the franchise will allow that investment to take place, which is a benefit for the staff and the travelling public and has to be welcomed, as well as other benefits in the franchise, such as the uh, produce that's used, uh, the bedding and the linen and some other branding opportunities as well, greater local benefit and benefit to Scotland as a consequence of the franchise. But I recognise that faults are frustrating for passengers and staff who have to manage uh, those conditions. We want the best possible service and to reduce any sense uh, of, of, of aggregation and, and agreement to uh, and grievance to the, the services that are provided. In terms of reviewing the maintenance plan, I believe that that has been done. I believe that the maintenance plan is credible and achievable in rectifying a number of the faults that have been identified. But of course, the big solution is the new rolling stock that will be uh, delivered. In terms of the Disturbances on Christmas Day and Boxing Day, again, I think that's caused great inconvenience and hopefully we'll avoid that going into the future and that the work with ACAS will hopefully bring the parties closer together and I would encourage people to continue um, talking. In a recent parliamentary question, I looked specifically and answered on performance and cancellation rates against the previous year and it is significant to say because there's been a lot of negatives about the Caledonian sleeper stated. But when we look at performance specifically in the last full rail period before the strike, both public performance measure and right time arrival rates were actually better marginally than those in the corresponding period of the previous year. To go back to that question around performance and on a pro rata basis, there were also less service cancellations than in the previous reporting year. And we know that patronage has actually grown against the previous year. Now, these important facts to state when talking about the Caledonian um, sleeper uh, service and in some respects it had performed better in the, the winter period than maybe some would have expected considering the, the, the weather issues that were faced uh, this uh, winter. I say since March staff have benefited from a 3% pay rise in uniforms and are focused on training and development. I only say that because it's their attitude and approach to customer service that has been so highly praised by guests and the travelling public across a range of media and a point which I know that CERCO will reflect upon and, and recognise that appreciation of the value and quality that the staff add uh, to the service. They are the ambassadors for this iconic Scottish service. I've touched upon the, the local benefit, the, the Scottish uh, food and drink menus, uh, the new bedding that's been part of the overhaul as well. But it is the new rolling stock that I think will make the, the difference that new fleet of 75 dedicated sleeper carriages to be delivered by 2018, construction of which has already started. And a new bespoke high-quality train fleet will be offering that uh, service. That was unique to the CERCO bid, I have to say, in terms of the franchise and preference to continuing to rely on the older stock. That new overhaul, those new trains, I think, will make a very strong a difference to the quality of service that's provided. But of course, I'm not resting on my laurels. As I say, I've interrogated the concerns that have been raised with me to be assured that there's a maintenance plan in place, commitments around addressing the concerns of the trade unions, the quality of staff is appreciated, and that's why I would continue to urge the trade unions and the operator uh, to work together in partnership to continue to address these matters, to avert any future strike action, to improve the quality of service that's paid for by the public and subsidised, of course, by the a taxpayer to get the best, but I do believe that the arrival of new trains will make the difference. But until that point comes, then we have to work together in the spirit that members have done so in this uh, chamber uh, to ensure that progress is made. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. That concludes Alec Riley's debate, RMT strike over Caledonian sleeper concerns, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.